Hello, so today I will be showing you a bit more um, my process of transferring the colors of this character that we see here and the details of the process. I won't, I won't super explain it, I will just go through it uh, in a bit more detail than last time so you guys are able to do your own research and so you are able to transfer all of this information into your 3D softwares uh, whether you use Maya or Blender or 3ds Max or whatever you will be able to just find tools that will do the same things as I do in this video I will be using Maya and Magic of Oxel this time so this is my final character the final model of the character as you can see I separate my character into a lot of pieces and uh, depending on what things I want to animate separately so uh, that way I don't have to worry about that on Mac on Maya later on so I create different working boxes you can do that by pressing ctrl n in magic of oxel and then you add in there whatever you think your character needs and once that's done you can just add that on top of the rest of the model you can just like fit uh, the box to your to your voxels by clicking here and then you just place it wherever this should go um, so that's how I made this model um, and once you have this done it's important also to see right here in the color palette I used like one horizontal line per color and this helps me to then transfer the textures more accurately uh, and I, you will understand why later but what I suggest is that, that you work on the middle of the, of the palette and you copy the color over uh, in all of the other horizontally all of the other boxes horizontally so if you see if I pick any of my colors I've been, I've been using here in the middle and you will understand better uh, in a minute so yeah this, these are all my colors the colors of the lights and the three colors I've used for this model I generally try to not, not use too many colors so okay once you have this your final model and your palette with your colors assigned you will go to export and press obj so then you will select the folder and save uh, once you do that magic of Oxel will export one obj per working box here so you will have a list with a lot of obj's that you will need to import into your 3d software that in this case i will be using maya so let's jump to Maya and see how the process continues. Okay, so we are now in Maya. I imported my model just by drag and dropping all the OBJs uh, from a folder into the Maya viewport. And this is the result. Um, so I want to really quickly talk about UVs and what they are. So as we have, when we select any object, we have three axes, X, Y, and Z. We also have three axes for, for textures. This is our texture editor, our UV editor. So in UV space, you have UVW. So you have three axes because textures can also be three-dimensional. So in this case, we're gonna, we're gonna work with 2D textures. So if you know anything about uh, UVs uh, on characters, you will notice that we don't see anything here. Why is that? Because the UVs that Magica Voxel produces are all collapsed into one point. So for instance, all UVs that holds the color, this brownish color, are all collapsed into this point here. So if I like select here, I will select all of that, all of those faces. So this is a bit confusing if you don't know anything about UVs. But you will see in a moment the difference between uh, proper UVs and, and UVs from Magic of Oxo. Um, so what I will do is I will call this our source model and I will duplicate it over and move it to the side. Um, so this new one will be called uh, target model. Yeah. So this is our source 
and this is our target and now I will just create automatic UVs for this guy I will go to modeling and UVs first option uh, it's called automatic not the first one but the fourth option is called automatic whenever I click it it will just create a bunch of UVs here so so you cannot see that it's because I'm using the Windows uh, screen recorder and it doesn't show pop-ups but basically you create you click UV and select automatic once we have that we have all these overlapping UVs we need to fix so within the UV editor we will cl click uh, modify and then the option layout uh, we click fix on the pop-up that we have we have and then some UVs will be created for us so as you can see here these shells these UV shells are basically 2d representations of the geometry of the character so each one of these shells will uh, be representing each face of this model so whenever some color is some shell is on top of specific colors you will see that those colors are printed into the model so if I move this you see that the color that then these faces have is different so this is what we want uh, proper UVs so we can use this on a 3d software such as unity or unreal because whenever you want to bake uh, lighting textures or anything on this model then you will need these UVs this is an important step uh, for having a game ready asset so the problem is that now we created new UVs we screwed up all the colors so what we will do is transfer the good colors into the good UVs I'll show you now my technique in Maya to do this um, I don't know if it's the best way but it's how I do it and you can reproduce this probably on any other software uh, Max, Blender, 3D, um, Cinema 4D, pretty much anything probably so what I will do is overlap the target and the source model so they are sitting on the same space yeah so I will just uh, grab this model and put it back to zero so now we have both models one on top of the other and I do this because I use the world space to transfer the textures it's basically one option within Maya instead of object space we use world space I will do that at least so what I will do now is as I have several objects I will just hide everything but my uh, my good model as I have several objects that I want to to keep the same I don't want the colors from from this part of the face to be transferred into this part of the jaw of the character right so then to avoid that I will just separate all the parts of both models at the same time so basically I will select both of them you see I'm selecting both and I will move this away so as you can see this is one on top of the other I'm just moving them both away together so I will just make sure that nothing is touching with nothing I found I find better results like this um, so I'm separating all of the parts together right and next I will open on the rendering tab here I will go to lighting and shading and I will click the option that says transfer map you want you can see it now again because of the Windows recording thing but it says transfer maps so you click that and this window will show up and I will go through the options and I will explain one by one so the first thing you do is you select your target model and you add here where it says target meshes so you click add selected a list of all of your of the geometry selected will show up there then you select source model and you click add selected in the source message mesh meshes sorry this will add all your source messages again the source is what contains the good color the target is what contains the good UVs so once you have those uh, there you will click on where it says diffuse and that will create a diffuse map basically this means color without shadows without anything 
that's what you want because the shadows will be generated later on your render or on your um, gaming engine such as Unity or Unreal. Good, so you will select a, a place for these textures to go uh, anywhere, it's fine, just wherever you want to save it. And then in here you will select world space and the sampling, the bigger the sampling, the better quality you will get. Uh, but the longer it will take so be patient because this can take up to like I don't know 20 minutes sometimes if you go very high on the resolution I will keep it low uh, 1k for the textures and medium resolution uh, for the sampling just to, so it doesn't take forever but you can go as high as you want good so we are all set up and then you click bake and the process will begin so I will pause, pause the video and come back when the process is is done okay so the process is finished and as you can see it's not perfect because of the resolution that I was mentioning but in general lines if you have uh, enough space between your shells and if you have enough resolution on the sampling and on, on the size of your texture you should not get these errors it should look just like the, the source model should look exactly like like it and um, good so once you have that you can basically just bring all of the parts of your model back to zero transformation and it will be all ready for you to move on into the next thing so for instance if you want to set up a mask for light textures then what you would do is in photoshop you would select all the parts that has light and create a black and white mask. So basically you're saying when, when you see white, paint a light. When you see black, don't paint a light. So then you will need to have a uh, to watch a tutorial on how to do that on your gaming engine such as Unity or Unreal. But basically what you need is your color, another shader that will be your light, and a mask to blend those colors together. Basically masks, black and white, what they do is whenever it's white, that means one, and whenever it's black, that means zero. So it will make all zero transparent, transparent and all white will make visible. So that way you get lights only on specific part of your textures. Yeah, so you will need to create that on Photoshop. So that basically concludes um how to do this and i can show you an example of uh how it looks when you put all the textures the thing is that it takes like 20 minutes in my case for all of this model to be done so then you see like in this example we don't have any errors uh, anywhere pretty much works well and even if i move away you can see that underneath it is also working if you had anything that is not working perfectly after that, you can just go and fix minor errors you might have in Photoshop, just painting on top and, and making sure that everything looks nice. So I hope that helps you and that you understand better how to transfer your textures. And if you are not using Maya, I think this will still give you all the tools you need to do your own research and find how to do this on whatever software you're using. Thank you for watching and see you next time.